Here's some more tips on how to study like a pro. When you learn something, some concept or a set of words, you might think that what you remember is just the concept or the set of words, but that's not how memory works. When you're learning something, you remember not just the thing that you're learning, but the context in which you learned it. Where were you physically when you learned this? Where were you emotionally when you learned it? Right? Encoding specificity gets at all of these things. The overarching concept is something called state-dependent memory. Your memory for something is best when you are in the same state during learning and testing. And I'm going to show you multiple examples of that same concept. But basically, the application for students is make your study situation as similar as possible to your testing situation and your memory will be at its best. Okay, first one, encoding specificity when it comes to location. This work goes all the way back to studies of Navy SEALs. The Navy wanted to know, okay, if we're training Navy SEALs to perform some activity underwater, I don't know, fixing a giant propeller or something, where's the best place to teach the skills that are needed for that action? On land or underwater? So what the Navy did is they came up with a two by two design, four groups of subjects. Either you studied what you needed to know on land or underwater, and you were tested on that material either on land or underwater. So the, each of the four bars here represent one of those conditions. Half the subjects had a situation where the location at learning was the same as the location at testing. So there's a match. The other half of the subjects had a mismatch. The location at learning was different from the location at test. What happened? When there's a match, when where you're at when you learn something is the same as where you're at when you're tested on something, your memory is much better than if there's a mismatch. Now, why do I have a, a big classroom picture there? If you go to medical school or law school, you are going to find colleagues who go to the very seat where they intend to take an exam. They go there to study. They, they are literally in the same physical location at study and test because they know about encoding specificity. And in medical school and law school, you need every advantage you can get. So they take advantage of it. You always want to take your exam in the same physical location where you learned the material. How about background noise? Like a lot of students tell me they like to study with music in the background. Or there's a Starbucks that uh, my wife and I like to go to. It's about a mile walk from here. And before the pandemic, we'd walk down there for a cup of coffee. And I always see on the weekends students hanging out in Starbucks studying. And it's a fun place to study. Don't get me wrong. But is it an effective place to study? Well, here's an experiment that was done about 20 years ago where they had subjects wear headphones while they were reading and attempting to memorize a scientific article. Half of the subjects heard silence and half of the subjects heard background noise while they were studying, but they were told to ignore that background noise. It was sounds of a cafeteria. So imagine the noise of your local Starbucks. It's playing in the background, but you just ignore it, right? Then you're quizzed on the contents of that scientific article. And either at testing, you hear silence or you hear the background noise from a cafeteria. And how, how does it go? Well, if you um, have a match during the condition, the sound situation at study and at test, your memory is best, right? So if you studied under a noisy condition, then you want to take the test in a noisy condition. If you studied in a quiet condition, then you want to take the test in a quiet condition. The other two squares or cells in this two by two design are mismatches where you study under noise, but test under silence, or study under silence and test under noise. And what you can see there is those students remembered a lot fewer ideas from the scientific article, right? 
anywhere from 20% to 40% less just by changing the sound in the background. Now this is a study, the physical location was held constant. The only thing that changed was what kind of sound was played through the headset, the headsets. So sure, fun to start a study at Starbucks, but a, a really inefficient way to study if where you're taking the exam is a quiet classroom. Okay. State dependent memory. It turns out your physiological state also influences how well you can remember material. So um, this is a study done in 1977, but it's funny. There's lots of examples of it, but I think this one is, is funny. Uh, either subjects were sober or drunk at the time of studying and sober or drunk at the time of test. Um, not surprisingly, when people are sober during study and sober during testing, their performance is the best. Um, and you might think, well, the worst performance would be people who are drunk when they study and drunk when they take the test. No, 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 you would be wrong. Um, actually, their performance is pretty good. It's the mismatched, especially the people who were drunk when they studied and sober when they took the test. Their memory is terrible. So, uh, I give this example because um, I've seen my students do various things over the years. One of them is during finals week or maybe midterms, they're exhausted. So unlike the rest of the semester, they stop off and, and get a cup of espresso before the exam. Big mistake. If you don't have coffee before you're studying or before lecture, then don't grab that cup of coffee before the exam. Similarly, I've had uh, a few students and again, folks, this is California where pot is, marijuana is legal. I've had a few students who came to class and they were completely straight. They had not taken any cannabis, no THC in their system. But when they came to the exam, they were nervous. So they decided, oh, you know what? I'm going to smoke a little pot before the exam so I'm not so anxious, so I'll perform better. Now, it's obvious when they're in the class because you can smell them a mile away. I wanted to tell them, look, don't come to lecture, I'm sorry, don't come to the exam stoned unless you came to all the lecture stoned. If you came to the lecture stoned, then come to the exam stoned. But if you hadn't been smoking pot before the lectures, before your study section, then don't smoke any pot before the exams because you're completely ruining things in terms of state dependent memory. Turns out your emotional state is also part of your memories. Have you ever noticed that when you're really depressed, you are more likely to remember depressing episodes from your, from your life? Oh, I feel like such a loser and there's this other time I was a loser and this is some other time I was a loser and oh, I'm such a loser, right? Downward spiral. But people can do the opposite with happy emotions, right? When you're in a good mood, you're feeling like a success, you'll think of times when, other times when you were successful and other events where you were happy and it's sort of an upward spiral. So whatever emotional state you were in when you studied material, you want to be in that emotional state when you were tested on the material. You know, every once in a while we dabble with uh, evolutionary explanations for cognitive processes, and this is one that fits right in there. It turns out that our memory is terrific for material that relates to our ability to survive, right? And that makes sense in terms of a, you know, if, if you think that this brain, the goal of the brain, the goal of thinking and cognition is to help us survive and succeed in life, then it makes sense that our memory system should be finely tuned for any information that's relevant for our survival. And that's exactly what you find in the literature. Last effect I'm going to tell you about. That if you test yourself on material, you are much more likely to remember that material. So um, this actually comes from uh, a quote from Francis Bacon back in the 1600s. If you read a piece of text through 20 times, you will not learn it by heart as easily as if you read it 10 times while attempting to recite it from time to time and consulting the text when your memory fails. In other words, you remember more if you spend half your time testing yourself. And that's actually what the study says that I'm going to show you. So long-term memory for material is best when you spend a good chunk of your time not reading or rereading or thinking about the material, um, 
in isolation, but actually testing yourself in the material. And the important part about testing is that when you get something wrong, you go back and study it. Okay, so you need to have that feedback. Here's a study, college students. They were given a, a passage to read for seven minutes, and then they had, what was it, two minutes to solve math problems. Okay, then half of them took a seven minute quiz on the passage that they had studied for seven minutes. So they're spending their time testing themselves on the material for the quiz, or they just continue to reread and study the passage as usual. So half the class did testing, the other half did not. You come back after a week and what happens? The people who uh, simply kept reading the passage, their memory isn't nearly as good as the subjects who spent half the time testing themselves on the material. So I give lots of tests, practice tests, practice questions, graded questions in my classes before the exam, because I know that by doing that, I'm significantly improving your, your memory for the material, which is what I want. That's it for uh, lecture 13, my class. Next thing that happens is exam two. All right. Bye, everybody.